guys, happy Wednesday. Happy official new year. Today is January 1st. I'm coming to you from the past that is also the present that is also a new decade. Past present because I'm recording this but you're not gonna see it for like a week. Does that make sense? This is my amazing hair that I woke up with today. Um, Parker and I just got back from dropping the boys off with their dad. They're going out of town so that's super exciting. Um, but we are stuck here um, adulting so we don't have much plans. Does that make sense? Let me, um, hold please. How, how is this? Uh oh, wait. Oh, because we're dancing in the background. That's nice. So today's January 1st. It's Wednesday. Parker has a day off. He's going back to work tomorrow. So um, we are just kind of hanging out. We, well, I don't know if Parker was, but I was asleep by like maybe 10 o'clock last night. Um, there was no intention to stay up and bring in the new year. I think that's more of like a, I did that in my Mexican youth. <laughs> If you're Mexican, you understand. Um, it's kind of a big deal. You eat the grapes and you do the dollar and you break a plate and you eat the lentils and you do the whole thing. This year, I feel like that that um, meme that's going around where it's like the days between Christmas and New Year's are a total blur. I never actually felt like that until this year. This year, I don't know what day, like today doesn't feel like a Wednesday. I don't know why I don't have the boys. Like, what am I supposed to do today? I'm a total mess. So I'm doing laundry, naturally. When I don't know what to do, I do laundry. It's my coping mechanism. Anyway, today's Wednesday. Um, it'll just be Parker and I today, and then tomorrow his uh, babies come home, and then it'll just be the four of us for almost a week before my kids come back because, like I said, they're out of town. Anyway, um, I have some things I want to do here around the house. I don't know if you guys can tell, but behind me, I have sort of like a gallery wall um, of images that um, I feel are stale. Um, I'm tired of looking at the same pictures. And then there's two additional walls upstairs. When you get to the top of the steps on the left and the right, there's two additional gallery walls. I love photographs. I don't like art. I'm not a fan of art. Um, I just think it's taking up space for something that doesn't mean anything to me. And that just is personal because I'm not an art lover or an art connoisseur, right? Maybe if I had a giant mansion with walls to fill, I'd want some scribbles on the walls. <laughs> but um, I feel like having a lot of photographs of people that are special and important and family and friends um, really warms up a space. But again, the pictures feel stale. And here's the thing is, we hardly ever take pictures as a family, like the whole, the six of us. Um, and I hardly have any pictures of bonus baby junior and senior. So it kind of becomes sort of like a um, number thing. I'm like, man, I need more pictures of the girls up here, but I don't want to just shove pictures up there of them like in pajamas, you know? So anyway, I kind of want to do a little hard reset and what better way to do it than in January. So that's what we have going on today. Another thing is, another piece of update, um, we are going on a date today. I just took the initiative and I just put it on the calendar. I'm like, hey, you know what? It's New Year's Day. We don't have plans. You're home from work. I'm not working today until tomorrow. Why don't we go on a date? And my latest obsession is cheese. So um, there's a restaurant called North Italia that has a really good cheese um, board. Um, there's another really great, it's sort of like a bar. I wouldn't even call it a restaurant. It's called Bottled and Bond. If you like bourbon or whiskey, sweet Moses, you have to go there. So Bottled and Bond has a really good cheese board too, but as good as, it, as good as it is, if you guys are like cheese board lovers, you know there's something missing. I'm not like a charcuterie board lover, like I don't need a ton of meat on there, but if it's gonna be a cheese board, I need the textures and I need the um, flavor profiles. So give me some honeycomb, give me some marmalade, give me like a remoulade or some roasted vegetable in some sort of oil, like, I don't know, grilled asparagus or uh, grilled bell peppers or pimentos that are, you know, have been peeled and they have that char on them. So I need that balance on a cheese board. And this bottled and bond restaurant is really just cheese. <laughs> and let me, let, let me clarify. 
Cheese is always good. I love my cheese. But um, I wanted to go to this other restaurant called 60 Vines. It's in Plano um, that also has a cheese board. And I think I've already had it before, I wanna say. I wanna say I've had this cheese board before, but I wanna say that it was on a girl date with some girls that are not very nice girls. <laughs> We may get into the tea later, but it was just not fun. It was it was like when you're trying to be friends with someone because you think you're supposed to be friends with them, but you're like, uh, ultimately, I don't really like you because I know you don't like me and this isn't going anywhere. Anyway, so um, I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas. We went uh, to Louisiana the weekend before Christmas. Um, you wanna say hello? Come here. What's the matter? He's so crazy. So we went to Louisiana the weekend before Christmas um, and I actually met a lot of Parker's uh, family that I hadn't met before. Like it's almost two years in and I haven't met most of his family. Um, and I have to say two things of that memory. Well, three, the boys had an amazing time. They created so many memories and it just, there were several occasions on that trip where I like wanted to cry because I'm a wimp and I cry for everything. Um, but the two things that I was mentioning is um, it was a really great opportunity to meet Parker's family and just kind of get that different view of, I don't know, his tribe, his people, like, what are they like? What do they have to share? <laughs> and then the other thing was, um, my boys were treated like family and I've told you guys before, you can say whatever you want about me. You could treat me however you want. You know, there's, there's a lot of feelings of how people feel about me and it doesn't bother me. I don't care. Like I've, I'm, I've reached that point in my life where if you don't like me, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Um, and so, um, it's very important how people treat my people, my kids, my parents, my friends, my Parker, my bonus kids, you know? And so, um, they had never met my children. They had Christmas presents for them. They participated in all the games with the family and it was almost like a seamless fit. Um, it was crazy. I, <laughs> I can't even describe it. They were so happy. It was like we were spending Christmas with family and it wasn't anything that I was expecting. I, I didn't know what to expect actually. I had zero expectations so it was pretty magical. I know the boys really enjoyed it too. Um, but yeah, I think that's in summary what you've missed. I told you guys in the previous vlog, like the latest vlog before this one, that we were going to be out of town, so there wasn't going to be a vlog. Um, and a lot of you still ask, like, I've been waiting for a vlog. Did you tell us you weren't going to vlog? And I was like, yes, I did. But here, we're back. We're, uh, ready to go. And, um, it's our year, man. 2020. It's a new decade. It's like, it's like a hard reset, but like even more aggressive just because it's like a the, the repetitive numbers and it's supposed to mean something and, and Sophia's here. Tomorrow we have to take Wesley to um, his diagnostic clinic um, because I'm going to set the place on fire. No, um, they're gonna do an additional glucose curve, which this poor kid, man, if I told you how many glucose curves this child has had, um, if you don't know, diabetics have to do, it's kind of like the finger stick to see how they're glucose level is. So you basically have to drop them off at this hospital and they stick them every one to two hours just to see how their glucose levels are. Um, it's very stressful. Um, he doesn't like it. He gets very upset and I don't know if he gets potty breaks. And as a diabetic, homeboy needs to drink water and pee. So I'm not looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, and then we have like the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, there's no school, um, and my boys come back on Tuesday. So this vlog may be boring, or it may be super long, or it may be long and boring. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, hey, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, I've missed you, we're back, and we're gonna hang out this whole weekend. Me, you, and the Soph. Right, Soph? Tell them what, tell them about your Christmas. Tell them how your Christmas was. Do you wanna, do you wanna tell them? Hmm? Tell them how your Christmas was? Or, or you or not you don't you don't have to what do you what do you want to do just want to sit here and get all the cuddles oh my god you guys so last weekend I think it was I posted on my Instagram hey you guys I was totally gonna share these compression tanks from Amazon with you but um 
I saw the dogs in the background when I was trying to take the picture, and so I thought you might enjoy that more than the compression tanks. My <laughs> direct messages, like I couldn't keep up with them. My direct messages flooded with, yo, what are those compression tanks? Because I need them in my life. The stuff that I don't think you guys are gonna like, like my tea kettle or my coffee frother, are the things you want to know the most about. So I've gone to the point or the realization that you and I are just as boring. <laughs> where the simple things in life are what really get us going. So um, maybe later when I shower and not look like this and put on a bra, I'll show you guys these compression tanks. They're amazing. Um, I said I might do a singular standalone video just on compression tanks, but that makes me feel a little stupid. So maybe, maybe I won't. What do you think? Should I do it? Do you think they want a video on tank tops? I am a little salty though because when I bought mine, they were $24. And comparatively to the Spanx thin, thin Stinks, Thin Stinks tank, which is like the dupe for it, um, it's less than half the price. I think those are $58. And these, when I bought mine, were 24 to 25, depending on the color. They're $32 now. I see you, Amazon. I know what you're doing, price gouging. Anyway, even if the price went up to 40, it's still cheaper. <laughs> So maybe I'll show you those later. Um, but for now, it's officially nine o'clock and uh, I gotta go. <sighs> Do you guys like to shower? Let's just get real. I mean, we talked about bikini wax strips in my latest video. So pretty sure we've just, we've, we've built the bridge. We've crossed over it. We've burned it down so we can't cross back. <laughs> There's no turning back. We've, we've gotten to the point where we're family here and family discusses these things. So do you guys like to shower? I personally hate to shower. I do it and I do it every single day because three hair, greasy crown problems. However, I don't like it. I've never liked it. I still remember when I was little, my mom still laughs at me about it. She's like, hey, do you still hate to shower? And she just laughs. Cause she would be like, Daniela, bañate. Hi, mom, I don't want to. Do I have to? Do I have to do it every day? Yes, you have to do it every day. It's just, you know what it feels like? It feels like a cardio workout, and I don't like cardio. So it's like, it feels like a cardio workout. There's so much body I have to scrub. Like, there's like so much, so much action that has to happen in there. It's exhausting. And I, I, you know, I would prefer to do it first thing in the morning, but I do it at the end of the day because it's the only time I have time, and showering is the worst. So... I look for any excuse to delay the inevitable. Like right now, I'm prolonging this introduction because it means I would have to go take a shower. But then I'm like, oh, if I'm gonna go move around all those picture frames and patch the wall and do touch-up paint, then I will probably get sweaty and stinky and so I shouldn't shower right now, right? Doesn't that make sense? Y'all have been here for long enough. You know it makes sense. You love me and you support me and that's all that matters. I gotta go. I love you guys. One o'clock ish. Do you think I was gonna be showered by now? We had the speech. We had the whole conversation. The good news is I removed all the nails. I patched all the holes. I touched up the paint and we basically have a fresh new canvas. I sat down Parker with me and we kind of went through like frames and frames and frames and frames and frames of pictures. I just placed an order for pictures at Costco. They're not gonna be ready until tomorrow. Um, but knowing what we have now and what to work with, we can actually figure it out. So I'm gonna condense four-ish gallery walls just to one main area and just kind of simplify everything else. Um, but right now, so it made us breakfast, but our breakfast was just fruit, a lot of fruit, cottage cheese, honey, and some bacon. Relatively healthy. And like 10 minutes later, I was hungry. But I didn't want to say anything because it was my idea to make a healthy breakfast. And then Parker just told me he was hungry and I was like, I'm so glad you said something. And now we're having leftover extravaganza of the world. Because that's what you do after all your kids leave and you have a ton of leftovers. You just eat a smorgasbord of leftovers. Do you want to see? It's really fascinating. Okay, so don't be impressed, but a bunch of steamed rice that we had there was two extra thighs, so I just shredded those up. We had one sweet potato that I needed to cook, so there's that. And then Parker is eating my leftover broccoli from yesterday, right here. 
I'm touching it. See, I'm touching your broccoli. <laughs> and then um, a chicken breast left over from his lunches. Um, and so that's what we're going to eat. What are you going to eat? Hmm? What are you going to eat with your cuteness? Whatever falls off the table. Well, you're so little. Hey, Bobo. Bobo. He's locked in. It's too late. Hey, buddy. Hey. He's locked into his hero. Hey, where you at? He won't even look at me. What you doing? It is still a pure, whatever. Hey, hey you guys, 4.30. We are on schedule. So our reservation for 60 Vines was originally for five. And I was like, ain't no way I'm gonna shower enthusiastically and make it there on time. So we moved our reservation to six. But since it's 4.30, there's some errands that I needed to run tomorrow by myself while Parker was at work. So we're gonna do them now. We're gonna go to a mall that has an Amazon store because Amazon is making it very tricky to make returns now. Um, before you could do your own packaging and usually what I do is when I receive something and if it's damaged, broken, or they sent me the wrong thing, I just send it back in the same exact packaging just to make it easy for them. Well now they're like, oh you have to bring it unmarked, unlabeled to a authorized UPS store, um, they package it, which means you have to get out of the car, you have to get in line, you have to get a receipt, and it's a whole process. Um, so it's, it's a little, it's annoying. So another option they have is you go into an actual Amazon store, um, and since I need to go to the mall anyway, um, I don't know if you can tell, but the bouncing in this car is a little different. I just broke my camera on the windshield. Uh, Mr. over here got a new car, which is why he's so quiet and fancy. Playing with the cruise control right now. <laughs> Maybe that's why. We're going to the mall. We're gonna go fix my phone because I don't know what happened, but in the process of hanging all those frames, um, my glass shattered. Well, what's, what's happening? Hold on a second. I don't even know if I can show you on here. You probably can't tell, but that's me trying to show you. Just pretend you can see the shutter. Um, I have a privacy screen on my phone. It's one of those like blackout screens where if you see it side to side or from above, people can't see what you're doing. It's really awesome. So hopefully Zach doesn't have a long line. Um, and then Nordstrom and the Amazon store. And hopefully that'll put us right on track to our 6 p.m. reservation. I really don't want to do them all tomorrow. So if we can knock it out right now, we're gonna, we're gonna try it. So when we get back, if I can remember, I'll show you guys the um, gallery wall. So basically I took four walls that had frames and every single frame in the house and just made a big pile of frames. I patched all the holes, I removed all the nails, patched all the holes, did all the tissue paint, and then I just condensed all of the pictures, all of the relevant pictures, all of our favorite pictures, all of our current pictures to one focal point wall. And the other walls are just blank. Will we put pictures there eventually? Maybe, I don't know. But for now, I just needed that sense of, I don't know, I feel like when Parker and the girls moved in, it was almost like sticking pictures in to, like forcing, forcing a puzzle piece that didn't work into a spot. And I'm like, it just, I didn't like it. And so now we just kind of start it all over. It's like erase, start again. And it looks so good. I really, really like it. There are four pictures that we're having developed at Costco that won't be ready until tomorrow. So I kind of don't want to show you guys yet. You know what I mean? Like you guys have to get the real effect. Um, but they're not gonna be ready until tomorrow afternoon. So maybe I'll show you guys then. But right now we're gonna go to the mall just to run errands. I don't think you really want to see that, but we're gonna go to the mall and then we're gonna go to 60 Vines. And I'm definitely, absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, gonna show you my cheese board, okay?
guys, so it's 7.30. <sighs> I'm gonna turn the camera around. <laughs> um, 7.30, we just got home. That's how this is all up. shoes. You're so weird. <laughs> she rubbing on your shoes? Yeah, she took her nose in my boot. <laughs> okay, so, dinner, Mern, tell them about dinner. Okay, Bubble, you tell them about dinner. What did you think about dinner? You didn't get to go to dinner. Say hello to your friends. All right, focus. We engage. We went to dinner. It was amazing. So good, so delicious. And I actually thought it was going to be crowded. Nobody was there. So we had a cheese and meat board. Um, it was good, but I feel like I need more cheese. <laughs> I feel like I'm a cheese board critic now all of a sudden. Um, it needed more cheese, for sure. It just had uh, chev, um, goat cheese, ricotta, and like the tiniest little itty bitty tiniest wedge of uh, like an mm. aged cheddar. It, was, it wasn't it was even enough cheese for me. Mm. So it was good. So on the way home, I told Parker, I was like, oh, you know what? I don't have anything for dinner tomorrow, um, but the only thing I need is ground beef. Do me a favor and let's just pull over at Target and um, I'll just, you know, get some ground beef. This is the story of a girl that went to Target and got everything but the ground beef. We spent $110 because when we were there, I was like, oh, you know what, Parker? We don't have softener or detergent. I used them up last night. Might as well get that. Oh, and uh, Wesley ran out of his antacids. And we should probably get some more strawberries. Um, do you need another deodorant? Sure, let's get another deodorant. Oh, that reminds me, the boys ran out of shampoo slash body wash slash all kinds of wash. We even got paper plates. Did we get ground beef? The one thing we needed. Make me feel normal and tell me about your experience in the comment section below where all you needed was one thing and you forgot it. What was the one thing? This is nourishment for my family tomorrow. Um, so when I drop off tomorrow, when I drop off Wesley tomorrow for his curve on the way home, I'll just get the ground beef. Y'all, I'm gonna go to Target again and I'm not gonna get the ground beef. <laughs> We're gonna be. <laughs> that was the biggest yawn of my life. We're gonna be ordering Uber Eats for dinner tomorrow because mama forgot the ground beef. Yep. Yep, that's what's going ah! <laughs> Stop. <laughs> ah, it hurts. Mern, no. It hurts. You're too big. Mern, Mern. <laughs> it is a little peor. It is a little peor, cabrona. It is an enfadosa. It is an enfadosa, Mern. Pinche Mern. 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 You ready for bed? Mern, do you want to go to bed? You want to go to bed? <laughs> do you want to go to bed, Mern? That's her do you want to go to bed dance. It's like, nope. <laughs> What'd you do? You want to go to bed? Do you want to go to bed? I am in bed, mama. I am in bed, mama. Like, she's kicking me. Mern! Mern! No? You want to go to bed? Do you want a treat? <laughs> no, sir. Re. All right, you guys. So today's Wednesday. Happy New Year's Day. Tomorrow is Thursday. Parker's going to work. Bonus babies come back. I have to work. And Wesley has a glucose curve at 8 a.m. Okay, and then what? <laughs> Y ni si una pulga tan chiquita, y ni si una pinche pulga, y de una pulguita, y de una pulguita, pero pulga, y de una pulga, pero chiquita, pulguita, ¿por qué estás tan chiquito? Como una pulguita, pero una pulguita, pulga, ya me pulga, esa cabeza, manzana, cabeza de manzana, te doy una mordida, en esa cabeza tan bonita. Te voy a agarrar, te voy a agarrar, te voy a agarrar, uno, dos, tres, 
Uno, dos, tres. Coco. Manzana. Cabezón. What are you doing? What are you doing? You guys keep ruining my outro for today. All right. Sorry about all those cute interruptions. By sorry, I mean not sorry. <laughs> so, that's the status of my life. So it's gonna be a five day vlog. Are you excited? I'm kind of excited, although I don't know what I'm gonna be vlogging. I might like fall off the radar one of these days. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is it for tonight. I will update you tomorrow morning on my ground beef saga. <laughs> I know you guys are like riveted right now. You are on the edge of your seats. Will Danny get the ground beef tomorrow? Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> you guys, good morning, happy Thursday. It's like four million negative degrees outside. Okay, I just ruined my intro. I'm on the way to drop off Wesley for a glucose curve. Um, not happy about it. It's almost eight o'clock. Um, we're not gonna be there for another maybe five or six minutes, but I got so engulfed in the morning um, talk show, morning show, whatever it's called. I listened to um, the Kid Craddock morning show and I haven't heard it because you know, my boys have been on Christmas break and I usually love to listen to it in the morning. I just feel like I'm hanging out with friends, you know? And so I got engulfed in it. They were talking about first world problems like, ugh. My Roomba got stuck while I was at work. And so I had to come home, reset her, and I couldn't hear my TV while I ate dinner because she was so loud. <laughs> I know what that sounds like. Um, anyway, so we're dropping them off. Um, you know, it's situations like these where I wish I had a thicker, bigger backbone because I know something's wrong with my baby and I feel like there are baby stepping the whole process to figure out a solution. Like, I'm already on to a third doctor and they want to be very modest in their treatment of him. And so every doctor repeats the same steps when they have the previous files. And I understand that they have to perform their own examination, I get that. But I just wanna tell this doctor, like I wanna grab him by the shoulders and shake him up and be like, treat him for Cushing's. He has a pot belly. He fits all the symptoms. I don't want to hear about how he's not a clear indicator or a clear answer for Cushing's. I don't want to hear that he's on the high side of normal. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear what your plan is, you know, and retesting on a curve. I can tell you this curve, he's going to fail. He pees through his diapers and he pees through his diapers because he's extremely thirsty and being extremely thirsty means your kidneys aren't working, which means your diabetes, diabetes, your diabetes is out of control. It's like out of whack. You can't regulate it. So it's like, I really shouldn't have worn this sweater with this vest. It's kind of creepy looking. Um, it's just frustrating and it's frustrating because I feel insecure. I go to vet veterinary school. I don't know any of this stuff, but I feel like putting myself in a position where I act like I know more than the doctor is very disrespectful. But you know what's also disrespectful? The thousands of dollars I'm bleeding to get a solution for my kid. And I'm not whining about the money. I want him to be healthy and I'm gonna take and pay as much as I need to, within reason, um, to make him feel better and I feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. Like, I'm not stupid. I have four dogs. They're all special needs. I'm familiar with vet language and billing and, you know, how all of that stuff works. And so it's like, I don't wanna get to the point where I feel like they're taking advantage of me and I'm really close. I'm really close. I'm really close to just losing my poop and being like, y'all need to stop because it's disrespectful and you're taking all my money and you're not giving me any of it. And it's just like, he doesn't have a UTI. He doesn't have liver failure. He doesn't have like, we've been able to figure everything out. You know, all of the problems he's had along the way are because of his diabetes. And so it's like, get that under control. Stop treating symptomatically. Like his tear ducts stop working because of his diabetes. It's one of the first things that goes out is your vision and your feet, right? Or your circulation. 
and then um, he had a liver infection again because of his diabetes and so it's like oh well he has a liver let's say he has a liver infection so let's treat him for that and give him some extra liver enzymes it's like okay but you're treating you're treating symptoms and individual particular cases that are occurring because of his diabetes that is not under control control that and we'll stop having all these other issues it's like i get it's hard because wesley can't talk and be like, hey, this is what's going on, and I can tell you, and help me do it, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it, it's very challenging. And you know the worst part is, Wesley doesn't whine, complain, gripe, like yesterday, oh my God. I sat on the floor and cried with him, because you could just tell he was miserable. But he doesn't w cry, he doesn't whimper, he doesn't mope, he doesn't, he's just such a good, strong, brave dog. Oh, hold on tight, Wesley. We're gonna miss our turn. Oof, man, vuelta bombera, huh? Vuelta bombera. It's like a fire, a fire truck turn. So yeah, it's just very, very, very aggravating to start to get to the point where I feel like, you know, I'm getting bamboozled. Mm -hmm. I just want him to feel better. We just got here to the doctor. We're actually four minutes early, which is nice. Hey, you want to say good morning? Come here. Come here. Come here. Say good morning. Say good morning, handsome boy. You ready to see your doctor? Look, he's on alert. Look at that. Are you nervous? You know where we are, don't you? The whole ride over here, he was looking at me like this. I know where you're going, mama. I know where you're taking me. So we are going to drop him off. You guys, do you ever realize, like, um, oh, you can't see his Polly Pocket. Hold on. Let me see. They want to see your Polly Pocket. His little, his little back cinnamon roll, I call it his Polly Pocket. <laughs> Um, do you ever realize like, oh crap, I actually have a lot of errands to do. Like you're just floating around life and just thinking everything's fine. Besides the fact that I forgot my ground beef. Um, I have to go to CVS cause he ran out of antiacid. Um, it's called antiacid, right? Like people just say antacid because they're just eating a syllable, but it's antiacid. Y'all need to tell me in, in the comment section below. So he ran out of antiacid. Um, I have to pick up a prescription at CVS, so I might as well get his medicine there. Um, I have to go to my P.O. box um, because I sold something on Poshmark last night, so I'm gonna drop it off in the in the post office. If I'm gonna drop it off in the post office, might as well check my P.O. box. Um, and then, oh, all right. What do we got going on here? What's up with this majestic creature? Looks like a horse when they do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so ground beef, CVS, post office. Oh, and Costco. But Costco said my pictures won't be ready until 2. I don't want to be that girl that calls and says, I know you said 2, but are they ready now? <laughs> I mean, I guess I could be. <gasps> you want to be a Karen? Do you want to be a Karen? Tell your friends. I'm not going to see you until tonight. I have to be here until 5 or 6. Will you say a little prayer for me and my big paws? Hmm? I love you guys. You guys! Almost 845. I just dropped off Wesley. I went to the post office. And now we gotta go to CVS. Do you guys remember I recently posted a uh, video on my missus? Um, and I told you in the intro of that video, if you saw it, hey you guys. This video, I film it three to four times a year, and it's the easiest way that I get removed off PR list. <laughs> it really bothers me that if you own a brand, you can't handle criticism. And it's not like I criticize products in like a brutal way. Like, they shouldn't feel attacked. <laughs> they shouldn't feel attacked. Um, I feel like I'm very, positive in the way that I criticize a product. Hey, it didn't work for me because my hair is like this, my skin is like this, but it's good because it would work for someone that is like this, like that, or like that, you know? And so I feel like I do, I'm not doing the brand into service by saying it didn't work for me. Um, however, I did get two emails from two brands <laughs> that were like, we're removing you from our PR list. Um, I don't know. You can't own a brand and take things like that personally, you know? And you can't own a brand and then also email someone that says, this product didn't work for me. When I've had 
the same skin for 35 years and then educate me on why it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me because I know what works on my skin. You know what I mean? Like, yes, please remove me from your PR because I don't want to give this stuff away to people I love. <laughs> anyway, I had to get that off my chest. We're almost at CBS. Then I'm gonna go buy ground beef. You guys need to hold me accountable. Like, don't let me go home until I have ground beef in my hands. Like, this needs to happen. We need to, we need to make this happen. <sighs> Expedition, get some ground beef, all right? <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hi, baby. Mama's home. Mama, oh, who is making all that noise? Who is making all that noise? Is it you and your dress? Hey, where's your brother? He's at the hospital. He's at the, you wanna see my groceries? Mama got the ground beef. Are you proud of me? The one job she had last night, she got it right today. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. Let's put this down and we can go potty, okay? Goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Come on. Come on, cutie girl. Where's my old man? Where'd he go? Oh, dear he is. Oh, dear he is. Say hello to your friend. Say hello to your friend. Oh, you're so mad. Oh, you're so mad. Oh, you're so mad. Go, baby. All right, you guys. 9.42. We are home. I am tired, I'm frustrated. Okay, how can a pharmacy tell me you have the same prescription coverage? And then when I show up to pick up my lady pills, they're like, oh, actually, I can't get you generic, so you have to switch your birth control completely. So I am on low, low estrogen fee. They don't make it in generic. It's the lowest dose of hormone birth control pill on the market, um, but they don't make it in generic. I have tried everything. I've tried NuvaRing, I've tried the regular low, est low estrogen fee. Um, I've tried probably like six or seven different types of birth control. They either give me rage, they make me irrationally hungry, they give me acne, um, they completely, the majority of them completely kill my libido. But it's not even like my sexual libido, it's just physical contact. The idea of anyone even touching me, it, it's, I can't even explain it. It makes me really uncomfortable. And so the only one that I've ever used that actually works for the purpose of not giving me a period so that I don't get my anemia back is the low, low estrogen fee, which doesn't come in generic. So the reason that I'm on a birth control to control my anemia is because I have two kinds of anemia. The kind that you get because your body doesn't absorb iron from food and supplements, and then the kind of anemia that you get from blood loss from my period. So controlling one, the other one's not so bad, right? So given all the other secondary effects of birth control, that's the only one that makes sense. Well, I get to CVS and they're like, oh yeah, everything's fine, here's your new insurance. Oh, actually, no, it's not. You have to pay $140 every seven weeks to stay on this birth control or just switch over to the generic, which has like twice the amount of hormones. The last time I tried the classic low estrogen fee, which is like, the most basic birth control like the daily pill. Uh, the last time I tried that uh, was maybe 10 years ago. So I'm like, well, maybe I could try it again. I'm older, my hormones are different, like my lifestyle is different, maybe it'll actually work this time and not give me all the side effects. But then I'm like, it's $140 every seven weeks. So let's say $70 a month. I pay a lot more in food, I pay a lot more in clothes, I pay a lot more in my dog's medicine, medical insurance. I pay a lot more on stupid stuff. Why am I griping about it if it's the only one that works, right? So I don't know, I'm morally conflicted because I went from it being completely free, like zero. I didn't have to pay a dime for it before and it would get refilled every three months, it was so convenient, to now, because I skip placebo week, it will amount to $140 every seven weeks, which is lame. Anyway, 
that's the lame news. Do you want to hear some cute news? I haven't shown it to you, but get ready. All right, you guys, look at this. <laughs> Isn't that cute? It's our whole little family. And so I put it up on the mantle next to our little handprint thing. And then our little figurine. Look at that. All four kids are on there. Do you see the four little heads and then the two grown-ups? I got this at uh, Target in that dollar bin or whatever. It was like a dollar, maybe two dollars actually. Um, but yeah, it's our little family mantle now. Um, this is actually from Etsy. I will link the artist down below. So here's her Etsy account. Um, her name is Jessica Woodhouse and she does these cool designs um, depending on the size of your family. Um, she actually sends you the high resolution image so you can reprint it as many times as you want, but she also physically sends you the print. Um, she lives in the UK and so you can go to her shop. Let's go up here. If you go to her shop, um, there's all kinds of things that she does. Um, she custom orders or cu does your custom orders based on your family size. So like, um, it could be a good wedding present, a good birthday present, like a good best friend present. So you actually tell her the, uh, family members, how many family members you have in your life. Um, she asks you physical features or favorite colors or favorite shirt, and she will do it completely based on your preferences and colors and if you want flowers or vines or whatever. So anyway, I thought I would share that to you guys because it is absolutely precious. I love that she put the dogs in there too. And the funny thing is that these two would literally never be next to each other, but I love that they're next to each other in this picture. It's the cutest thing. And we actually developed these on four by sixes for each of the kids and they really enjoyed it. They got a hoot out of it because they're basically a cartoon, you know? Anyway, so I guess the good thing about today is that I didn't forget the ground beef. Mission accomplished. We got the ground beef. I have a video to edit because I need to post it today. <laughs> Oops. Um, and I think that's it for today. So I'm gonna put the groceries away, or rather just the ground beef. <laughs> put the ground beef away. Um, then I will sit down and edit um, the video. Something just fell inside the house and that's creepy. Um, wait to hear back from Wesley's vet and then make dinner. And that's it for today, really. I mean, I know y'all are living for today's excitement. Today's riveting, you guys. Today is riveting, so just sit back, make good adult choices, and don't pose when your double chin sticks out like this. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. We'll see you later. <laughs> hey, you guys, it's about one o'clock. I just finished editing um, my video that I'm posting tonight. So it's currently uploading, which means I can't do the description box quite yet. Um, and what I was gonna do is I was gonna start to prep dinner. Um, I think Parker and the girls will be home by 4.30 at the latest, and they usually come home super hungry. So I was gonna get started on dinner, um, and then I realized I don't have to be at Costco until two, so what if I film the dinner making process? I mean, I haven't posted on Cooking Break with Danny in a long time, and I wanted to do this whole comeback, like, all right, we're gonna focus on the new year and just realistic recipes and things that everyone can do because everyone can cook type of concept. But I was like, I don't need to do a big buildup. This is literally what we do every day. So in a previous video, I don't remember which one it was, um, one of you guys commented, and it kind of started a thread of, what were the meals, because I told you guys in that video, I think it was a vlog, I told you guys in that video that there are, I would say five to eight meals that we have in constant circulation, that there are meals that the six picky eaters in this home, well, four, because the two grown-ups eat everything, <laughs> but the four picky eaters um, all actually eat. So Parker's daughters don't eat vegetables. They don't touch vegetables, they don't lick vegetables, they don't touch vegetables. And when I mean vegetables, I mean the green good stuff. Um, they love potatoes. <laughs> they'll eat potatoes and they'll eat corn, but they're so high in starch that they don't equate as a vegetable. They're not nutrient dense, you know? And then my boys um, will eat an occasional vegetable here or there, um, but they're at that age where they want everything to be in like nugget form or it's, an, it's like unknown territory. So it's very difficult to come up with five to eight recipes that all six of us will eat um, comfortably, happily, no questions asked. 
Um, for me, you know, I grew up in a household where you ate what was in front of you. You didn't ask anything, you didn't question it, you didn't smell it, you didn't say you didn't like it, or you'd be spitting teeth. And I think this generation now, or rather the generation that lives in this household, kind of shoves things around with their fork or they walk in and they're already walking in with their face like, what you make for dinner? And it enrages me. So having figured out that these are foolproof recipes just makes my life easier, you know? It makes grocery shopping easier. So what I'm gonna do today is Italian meatballs. And this is something that is super easy that everyone can make and you can actually freeze them raw and cook them the day that you need them. So it's a very uh, cool, affordable, family friendly, freezable recipe that you can do in many different ways. You could do meatball subs, you can put it in spaghetti, you can crumble them and do like a bolognese type sauce, like a crumbly meat sauce. You can serve them with garlic bread, you can serve them with any sort of vegetable side. Um, I'm showing you the cheater way with the jar sauce, spaghetti sauce, but there is another way that you could do them. And I think that's gonna be a video that I do separately all together because um, it's gonna be how I hide vegetables in my sauce. When I make sauce from scratch, I fill it with spinach, carrots, um, zucchini, um, and I blend it so no one knows it has vegetables. Now, albeit, when you cook vegetables that long, they do lose a little bit of their nutrients, so it's not as healthy as, say, a mouthful of broccoli, but, you know, <laughs> You pick your battles. So right now, I'm gonna get started on filming just like the meat content of this video, and then tomorrow I'll do the intro and outro. But um, let me show you guys what I have going on here, and then as soon as I get that going, I'm gonna head out and get the pictures and go try on a bra. I just have to. I can't keep wearing training bras. I love my training bras, they're a great everyday bra, but until I start to dress the part of how I used to dress before my explant, like the wired bra, the cute bra, the bra with lace, until I start dressing the part, I'm not gonna feel like myself 100%. You know what I mean? Or rather, I need to just demystify that, that side of feminine underwear, women underwear, undergarments, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, I have everything laid out here, all the ingredients we're gonna use. I think we're just missing one thing, but it's actually over here. Um, it's just the store brand meat sauce that I use when I don't have time to make my own tomato sauce. Um, this is Parker's, um, I don't even know, what is this called? I'm totally blanking. Dutch oven, Parker's Dutch oven. This is one of the greatest things I inherited from uh, joining households. I love this thing. So we make chili here, we make meatballs here, we do um, gumbo in this pot. So it's seen a lot of love, you can tell. Um, so I'm gonna heat this up. We have our olive oil ready to go, and then all our ingredients are laid out. So I'm gonna film this for my cooking channel, and if it's live, I will link it in the description box of this vlog but for now I gotta get started with this and I think the next time I'll see you will be maybe at dinner time maybe I don't know I'll see you later hey hey you guys 510 look who we have here who is this say hello to your friends say hi friends hey hi friends I'm so happy to be going home because I'm so handsome we just picked him up of course we have no good news no bad news either. No bad news either. Parker's here with us. He came for moral support. I was like, Parker, you have to go with me. Don't let the doctor bully me. I have to stay strong. Cause you know when they like start talking to you, you're like, okay, okay. At least I am. So I have to stay strong. I have to stay strong. So we're coming back next week to do um, the second and final test to confirm or negate Cushing's. So look how pink his ears are. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna die. We're gonna get hit. By what? All these vehicles. You guys, if I die, it's documented. Save Wesley. Wesley? Save Wesley. Wesley? Oh. Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh my goodness. Okay, so they're gonna do one more test um, where they basically 
force cortisol into his body to see if he has Cushing's. That should give us an answer, but it's also a vague like test where it could totally- 80%. 80% accurate. Anyway, I told him, I said, look, I went down the WebMD rabbit hole veterinary documents and um, it's hard to really confirm Cushing's in little dogs. If this test comes back on the higher end of normal, can we still treat him as though he has Cushing's? He said no. <laughs> so I'm like, oh great. So here are options, two options. If that test comes back and he doesn't have Cushing's, we're gonna, if it comes back as a no Cushing's, we're gonna completely throw away the concept of Cushing's. We're not gonna talk about it anymore. It's not gonna be an idea. And we're going to consider the route of trying a different type of insulin. His insulin dose right now is at a eight. It was just increased from seven to eight, twice a day, eight units. Last August, he was at two and a half units. So in less than six months, we've increased his insulin about six units. Is insane. To me, that's insane. Plus, insulin is so expensive. Um, and so I don't feel comfortable giving him that much insulin, but it did give me a lot of clarity talking to the vet today because he said, technically, medically, you could give them one unit per pound. So he could be as high as 20 units twice a day. Could you imagine? That's a lot. Seems that, crazy. That is crazy. So right now we're gonna go up to eight units. Hopefully he responds to that. <laughs> His ears are so pink. <laughs> oh, you know what else the doctor said? He told us we need to go buy a little AccuCheck testing machine. Um, this one is so cute. He got on his Amazon, he's like, this one? He's like, yep, that's the one we use here. So he's telling me, like, he's like, you need to come here and we're gonna teach you how to check his, um, like, glucose levels at home so that we can kind of get a baseline on when he's stressed, if he's stressed here at the hospital versus how is it when he's at home, just to kind of get a really good, what is this? It's a rabbit. It's a bird. <laughs> no, like a... It's a fish. Um, graph, I guess. Slope. Table of like... Data. Of data. Yeah, exactly. Like data collection, basically. So we're going to order that. I'm pretty sure I could find like a YouTube video on how to check, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's out there. Every, everything's we could, we can't hurt him, right? No. You think we could hurt him like by... By testing his blood? Yeah. No. No, I don't think so either. So they, he told us they stick them either in the ear or on the pad of his paw. Um, so that'll be a nice adventure. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that in the vlog. Um, so I don't know. I guess it wasn't good news, but it also wasn't bad news. I mean, his, his glucose is coming in at like 600 um, several curves ago. This one came in at what, three, 300? 300 was the most, I think. Yeah, it started at 240 or something. 240. So it was okay. It was on the high level of high side of normal. But anyway, we have, have him at, we have to have him between 100 and 250. We're not there. <laughs> so we're actually going to increase his dose to eight. And right now we're going to go home and we're going to finally eat dinner. Bonus babies came home at about four. But the minute they walked in the door, the vet called and said, come get Wesley. So we fed the girls left when to pick him up so now we get to eat dinner together yeah it was a plan yeah well let's forget this guy some ice cream it was <laughs> a, a, lo lo a lollipop <laughs> that's true <laughs> we'll get you a carrot <laughs> oh remember i told you guys i was gonna go buy bras i chickened out i chickened out and i decided to do laundry instead we talked about this i told you laundry is my coping mechanism i don't know if i'm ready to go try on bras i did measure myself at home though the numbers are up in the air. Do you want to know my new bra size? I'll tell you tomorrow when I go bra shopping. 